All right, we're going to do uh, some stenciling today. I'm going to show you how to do some acetate stencils first. Uh, there's going to be several different processes that we're going to show you to making stencils to doing for tattooing. Uh, this is the acetate we're going to be using today. Um, first, I'm going to show you some of the uh, things that are used for making acetate stencils. Uh, this is a stencil cutter. Um, when you purchase them, the needles are not adjusted to what you need, so you have to adjust properly to get the right markings in the acetate itself. About like so. And you should actually take this and snug this up because hand tightening will not be enough to secure that needle in place. Okay, we'll do this one here too. As you see, these are two different types. Which one is going to be more comfortable for your hand? That's an individual taste. Other type for cutting the acetate stencils is the electric with a diamond tip. We took a tracing of a gentleman that has a uh, hand-picked tattoo that we're going to do some cover-up work on later on in the videotape. What I have done is I've had him pick out a design that he would like to cover this with, which was this particular design here, eliminating the skull in the center. Black is generally your only color that will cover for a hand-picked tattoo. So what we did was we got a tracing off of him, and then we took it and we put it in the design like this so we know where we're going before we get there now if you were to make a paper stencil which we will get into later on unfortunately using a paper stencil if you place this on the skin you would not be able to see where your line work was to make your cover up go proper so what we're going to do is, I've already done a tracing of this already ahead of time, taking out the skull and in little tiny spots here, I actually drew it just a tiny bit bigger. We're going to do a placement on this because we're not sure exactly which way is going to work best for Jim on this. We may take the design and go this way or we may take it and we may take the design and put it going this way. That won't be determined until the time comes for the actual cover-up. But we do know that this design is the proper design. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take the acetate and we're going to take the acetate and we're going to place it like this so we can see about how much acetate we're going to use on this. So we're going to take and we're going to cut ourselves out of square. This is a light board. This will enable you to see a design once you turn it upside down. Because in order to do this, to come out right when you put it on, Jim, you have to take the design. This is the front side of the tracing here. So we have to take it and actually turn it upside down. We're going to tape the edges on this so it doesn't move. Remember, trace side down because when you flip it over on a hand cut stencil, it'll be right side up. Now that our design is down, we're going to take our acetate. We're going to put our acetate on the top like so. Use the tape. We're going to tape each one of the corners because we don't want any movement in the acetate itself very important okay now I'm going to show you how to use an acetate stencil cutter itself again a lot of it has to do with positioning like you do when you tattoo if you'll notice where my hand is positioned it's positioned a lot like I do when I tattoo but your hands are going to sit just like they do on the skin 
for tattooing, but you're actually going to use your other hand for a guidance and to stabilize yourself as you're working. Now when you're pressing, if you look at the angle that I have the needle, I'm not straight up and down. I'm not way down. I'm primarily at probably about a 45 degree angle coming up. So I'm going to cut, and you're cutting towards yourself, not away, because if you go away, you will not have control of the needle. Just a little bit of pressure, and if you look, my hand, my right hand is actually doing the guiding, but my left hand is applying the pressure. Why I said to you it, it's so important to get the right length of needle sticking out here because if you had too short you won't be able to control the pressure and you'll actually I'll show you if you went too deep what it does is it scars the other side of the, the stencil and the indentation is too big it's kind of a, a trial and error with a stencil cutter itself to find what feels good for you. Now these are generally only used for single use. So you would make this for one customer and one customer only. You should properly clean this even though it hasn't been used uh, by washing with an antibacterial soap and drying. You're also going to use what they call stencil powder. You should put that in a regular type of shaker and I will show you about using that after. So the actual stencil will be ready to apply to the skin. It will actually leave a black stencil print on the skin to follow. You'll notice that your hand will get tired. You'll be surprised. It takes a while to to uh, build up where you can spend some time doing these but you don't use that many of them but it's nice to know that you know how to do it and when a job comes with they are required to have one you will be able to do it. I'm not going to actually use the other uh, stencil cutter here, the one type that's just like this, but it's in a different size and a different shape. But I will use the electric just to let you see the difference. I actually like to take the stencil and kind of move it up so I can check it first before we actually remove it off the off the. Uh, paper is if you take it and you raise it and you do this with it so you can actually see where your lines are to make sure that you didn't miss any. Now I'm going to leave this little piece down here for just a minute and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of the electric stencil cutter just to let you see that it does work very well. It, again, it's personal preference. Sometimes you have to adjust the speed on these. They're a bit on the noisy side sometimes. They don't have to be running that fast in order to cut an accurate stencil. I'm going to turn this on and I'll, I'm going to gear this so it cuts the right stencil. And then I'm going to do just a little bit of work over here. This was the electric, this was the hand cut. There is a difference in the feel. Normally what we do when we're using these, we take these and we like to cut these 
circular because I'll tell you when you put these on someone's skin these are actually very sharp on the corners like this here if you were to place this onto the skin and actually stick someone sometimes it can be painful so it's best to cut your stencils in a circular form you're not going to hurt anybody in the process okay on the stencil itself there's actually a small burr that was created from the stencil cutter itself from etching into it what we like to do is we actually like to take an, an old piece of the acetate and we like to take it and rub it like this if you listen very closely you can hear it scratching across it's taking the excess burr off of this nice and smooth okay now we're going to peel off our tracing which we turned upside down on a light board this is your stencil this is your cut side this is your stencil side if you look there's your cut on your stencil you've made a perfect stencil we're going to take Jim's design now and we're going to place Jim's design down on the light board so you can see this again if you look Jim's design is going to fit right in there and when you put the stencil print on you'll be able to see that versus trying to do it with a paper stencil which you cannot see through now we're going to make a carbon stencil uh, we're going to take our carbon paper we're going to place it underneath our tracing paper carbon side up so it comes out right side up on the design here if you're going to do a reversal you're going to flip it over and you will do your tracing again from this side so we're going to do a tracing this time of this particular design right here keep your fingers placed on the paper a little bit of pressure if you'll notice the way my fingers are in position almost like I'm tattooing again a good thing to get in the habit of and a little bit of pressure a pen works very well versus a pencil it runs nice and smooth on the paper always drawing in the same direction you're going try not to draw backwards it's hard to see where you're going and be accurate be sure before you stop on your design to pick up your carbon check to make sure that all your line work is done you can do that by generally just looking in the reflection of the light if you're not sure go back it's better to go back and make sure on a design there's your copy make sure when you're done cut your copy out so you don't get your fingers on it moisture will cause a smear in the design makes it a little bit more difficult to follow you do want to take your design and cut back on the excess paper it makes it easier for the placement of the design and for your customer to see it
we're going to do a hectograph pencil stencil. Uh, you want to work very careful with these type pencils. They work great. Uh, they do have a soft lead in them, so you have to use a little bit lighter touch on them. And uh, we're going to show you how they work and what the stencils look like when they're finished. You're going to place the design underneath the paper. Again, applying a little bit of pressure so your design does not move underneath the paper. Easy on the pressure, always drawing in an upward position. Drawing down, you don't have total control all the time. Again, looking at the position of my hand, it's in the same place it would be if I was tattooing. Get yourself in a habit of working the same way all the time. You will be a better tattooer. Now if you take notice, I'm tracing off the same side of the paper as the design. So in turn, when I put the print on, it will be a reversal. We do want to bring that to your attention. Now we're going to make another type of stencil. We're going to use our transparency maker to make our transfer for our tattoo. This is the design we're going to copy. We have two different types of Spirit Master copying paper, depending on what type of design you're using. We'd like to take the design and cut it out first so we don't actually waste paper. This has a protective paper underneath so we don't, we don't actually end up with any other images on the paper. And what we'd like to do first, I'd like to place this to the side, take your design, place it on the face of the paper, cut around it, put it in between the copy, on the bottom, design side up, We'll have an automatic feed, just press it nice and easy. Comes out through the bottom. And there's your design. Peel this off. You might want to discard this right away because this is very messy. There's your tattoo design. There's your copy to look at while you're tattooing. This is basically your bench setup for preparation for your getting ready to do some tattooing. You have your ultrasonic directly in front of you, which will have a cup in with water for rinsing out your machines. Your colors are within reach, and you should lay your colors out ahead of time. Your bandages within plain reach. Your gloves. Your gloves should be directly in front of you. So after you scrub down from your sink, you walk down, you put your gloves on, grab your instruments, you'll be ready to assemble and go to work. If you're looking to your right, as I'm sitting in front of the bench, you have your sharps container for disposal of your needles that you've used on your customer. So your customer goes home with a good feeling that you use new needles on him. That's a very important part. Okay, now we're going to get prepared to do some uh, setup work, but we need to do a scrub down first. 
Uh, I'm going to wash my hands and most health departments require a, a, a special type handle on your sinks. They're called strikers because uh, they don't allow you to touch the sinks. Um, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to scrub down and it's very important to get into the cuticle areas and the webbing parts of the fingers because that's where most of your bacteria and your germs are going to lie. So we'll get that done first and they generally require you to scrub for about 30 seconds to a minute to make sure you get in between everything. As soon as you're done with the uh, scrubbing process, okay you want to go over and you want to make sure you put your gloves on immediately so you don't contaminate anything on your bench because your bench has been prepared ahead of time here. And we're going to place these on. If you look on the bench here we have a disposable cap holder and there's several caps here even though we're going to do just primarily black work and black washout work uh, the health department regulations state that once you fill a cap you cannot go back in and refill it because it is called cross-contamination and that we want to avoid at all cost. Over here we have autoclave bags all the instruments have been autoclaved depending on what type you use you'll have to check your colorations on the back to make sure they are sterile beforehand we're going to cut them open and we're going to place them in the machines and let you see how we're doing that this needle that I just took out of the autoclave bag that is a uh, seven needle round liner and a five needle square tip liner tube that's the uh, type of needle we're going to be outlining with for this design. Uh, the other tubing that we've just taken out is a four needle flat shader tube with a four needle flat shader bar itself. They work very well for this type of design. It allows you to get into tight spots. Okay, now we're going to place the uh, needle bar into the tube very very carefully because you want to make sure that you don't bump the tips of the needle. The loop itself should face to your left to make sure when it goes down into the tip that it goes in the correct place. Put your finger on the back of the bar which will keep it secure inside the tube so it doesn't flop around and possibly damage the needle. It will enable you to put the tube in the machine and still be in control. Okay, we're going to set up the uh, tube in the uh, machine now. We want to make sure that we place our finger on the back side of the bar against the tube so we don't get any play in the tube, taking a chance of damaging the needle. Always hold the machine towards you so you can see exactly what you're doing. If you watch my fingers, on my left hand it's going behind the machine here because I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on the machine between my forefinger and my thumb. And my two fingers here are keeping the tube in place. I'm going to place the needle bar on, making sure that the needle bar is snug against the grommet because if there's play between the grommet and the bar, there will be splashing and puddles on the skin that you don't want. I'm going to do an adjustment on the tube in one second. I'm going to put the rubber bands down first. Very important to get your rubber bands in place. It's important to make sure they're nice and even coming across. If you've got your bands twisted here, it will cause a different tension against the bar itself. So get them on nice and smooth. You're going to do the adjustment on the tube and the needle bar now. I'm going to place this against the paper so you can see that the end of the needle bar is just going to be sticking out at the end of the tip. I'm going to bring it up. Snug it down, not tight, because you may have to readjust this again to make sure that your tube is straight. We're going to take the machine. We're going to tip the machine this way. If you look at the tube, 
in relation to the machine, you have to make sure it's straight this way so your tip and your tube is not angled. Now we're going to adjust the needle bar to the tube tip itself. You'll need your number five eye loop. If you watch the needle, it has to ride directly in the bottom of the tip. If it does not, it will cause a splashing in the machine. And you'll be very unhappy when you're doing your line work that you can't see where you're going. Now we're going to set up your four needle shader. Your four needle shader is four needles that will fit into this square tip here which will allow you to get into very tight areas and still cover a relatively large area of skin. Placing into the machine onto the armature bar snug no play placing the rubber bands evenly okay we have our needle bar into the tube now it's very important to make sure that you don't have too much needle sticking out the end of the tube tip itself because if it does it will hang up in the skin and cause skin damage if you look very closely there's a tiny, tiny bit of needle sticking out the end of the tube tip itself. Now we're going to adjust the needle to the bottom of the tube tip itself. It's very important that it sits flat. If it does not sit flat, it will not feed properly and you will end up with big puddles on the skin. So. We're going to look down inside, making sure the needle is flat in the bottom of the tube tip. Okay, then we snug our machine down. I want to point out a very important part here. If you look at the way I'm holding the machine, thumb, finger to the back of the machine, I never touch that front spring. You never want to touch that. We're all ready, set to do some work. Okay, first I'm going to shave your leg and prep it, and then I'm going to put the uh, pivot cleanse on, which will actually absorb the stencil print I'm going to place on it to you first. So, let me grab you here. We're going to clean you down with some tincture green soap. And make sure you use a new razor at all times. Dispose it. Very important to take off all the hair so it doesn't cause a problem when you're tattooing. Uh, it also affects the healing process if there's hair in the tattooed area. After the shaving, you want to go through and check to make sure that you got all the hair off. And if you look over here on this left, I did miss a little spot, so it's very important to make sure that you get that. We're going to clean the skin area with a little bit of Hibiclens. Works very well, absorbs the dye off the printout very well. Gets a little bit on the tacky side, which that's what you really want to absorb that dye. Now I'm going to put the print on by using a piece of acetate which will help to get it on nice and straight and to get it on evenly. When you place it, position it exactly where you want it, put it down, press up on the design evenly to the top, then bend it. Just hold it on the skin for just a minute and give the, give the dye a chance to get into the skin here. That makes it nice for tattooing. Everything very clear, legible. Okay, Jeff, I'm going to grab the mirror here and 
I'm going to let you take a look at this before we do this on you. How's the placement, Jeff? Very good. Okay. Okay, with a printout like this, makes it very easy, nice, and clean to do your work. Everything's very clear. You're good to go. Okay, we're going to hook up the clipboard to the tattoo machine itself. We have a binding post on the back area, which it will go into one end. And the other end of the clip cord goes into the bottom of the tattoo machine itself. And as you notice, the clip cord and the machine are covered in plastic to prevent cross contamination. Keeps it nice and neat and clean. We have our speed set. Now we're going to put our ink into our cap holders. Very important. Use tissue when twisting your tops so you don't contaminate the tops. If you notice the bags are on the bottles at all times, they will be changed at the end too. You can fill a few caps in your cap holder for using black because black does not separate like regular colors do um, because there's a different chemical mix for the inks themselves when you're dealing with color versus black. I'm going to put a little bit of Vaseline on the top of my hand which will save me from going back and forth during working time. And I also, before I tattoo, I will place a tiny bit of Vaseline on the skin because when you're tattooing itself, it helps to keep the ink from running. When you're starting an outline, you want to pick two points. A to B. Always working from one point to another. Don't start your tattooing. Stop your line try to pick up again. It's very difficult. You will get a small dot in a line a lot of times if you try to do that. Also, when you're starting your tattooing, if you look at the position of my hand, the fingers are resting on the skin which enables me to run very smoothly. Like a pen, it rests in that corner and will allow me to run a stable line. Okay, we're going to start working on you here now. We're going to start right at this point here. We're going to run straight down to the bottom. Nice and slow and steady. Not too fast, because running a fast line only means you got to go back and touch it up. And trying to touch up doesn't work. Steady, slow, nice hard black line. A little bit of Vaseline. You notice I'm not getting big puddles on the skin. Why? Because the needle set right, the little bit of extra Vaseline I'm using, and being steady. If you'll notice as I'm running that line, we're not getting big puddles. A lot of people tend to worry about smearing the actual print that you've put on, but if you're very light, if you'll notice the way I touch it, I'm not actually rubbing on it, I'm dabbing it, which is important. You can do all the rubbing afterwards. After you get that on, you're good to go. If you take that Vaseline when you're working and you do this with it, you see that gob? When you run a line through that, the ink will never penetrate into the skin tissue. You'll look and wipe it off and you'll have a gray scratch mark. Very important. If you're going to go with the Vaseline, very, very little. Also, you can grease your fingers just a little bit, which does help you to slide along the skin tissue better. Make sure you're keeping the skin tissue tight. If you look, my forefinger and my thumb I'm not squeezing 
like this because believe it or not when you're tattooing if you're squeezing too hard you're making the tissue too tight and what happens is you actually end up cutting the tissue you have to find it something that's comfortable for you if you'll notice I'm not squeezing real hard Sometimes during the tattoo process, if your customer hasn't prepared himself physically and mentally for a tattoo, they sometimes become lightheaded. So sometimes you may have to work uh, a little slower, or you may have to take a little break, or you may have to give your customer some water. I prefer personally to work... Um, with a fan in my studio to keep your customer cool at all times and I also have candy on hand in case your customers get a little lightheaded because it helps the blood sugar level come back up. If you'll notice I started my design at the bottom and the reason for that is if I was to start it at the top by the time I got to the bottom my design would be distorted and I would not be able to read it very well. You see the position of my fingers? That's why I say stay in that position. Get used to doing it one way. If you notice when I'm working, I'm always trying to work this way or this way. If you take your tattoo machine and you're working this way, you're drawing the machine in a backwards motion and remember it goes back to making sure the needle is sitting flush in the bottom of the tube. So try to visualize you're actually picking up the needle from the bottom of the tube and you will get a bad line. You'll notice on the line I just put on, the machine was actually angled a little bit to the side, but I did go very slow with it. If you have to get in a position where you have to do a line such as that, you have to go slower because if you go quickly with the line, it will pick that needle up. When I spoke to you earlier about stopping in the middle of a line, if you have to do it and you've got to pick up on a line, you have to go back when you start the line you have to go back just a little bit from where you stopped so you won't end up with a dot in the line if you look I stopped right here so I can show you how to pick up on a line without being detected within your design you have to start back you actually have to start back on the line a little bit from where you left off so you can work the line in here and then continue on and make your line. Also, while you're working, very important. Make sure that you're working off the points of the needles. You don't want to take this machine and this tube and go knee onto the skin because I can tell you, you'll dig a big hole in people and they'll be very unhappy. You have to work off the points of the needles themselves, which the points I'm referring to visualize as a pencil like this. You're only working off of that much of the needle. You're not using the whole part of the lead itself. Very important. If you'll notice the sound of the machine is very consistent. It doesn't fluctuate like this. If you're tattooing, 
and you're doing this, you're burying that needle into whoever you're tattooing, and they're going to be unhappy. If you'll notice the angle that I have the tattoo machine itself, it's for the correct penetration into the skin tissue. If I were to take the machine and be working on you, and took the machine and I did this with the machine, I dropped it way low to the skin tissue, you're going to get what they call shootouts in the skin, which in part would look like the line went like this, and you'd have this big gray mark underneath the skin, and the skin and the ink would spread. Your lines would not stay nice and even like this here. So very important, angle of the machine, not like this. People commonly have that problem with the ink that shoots under the skin, like what I told you back here, underneath, from using a round tip liner. Because a round tip liner versus a square tip liner, it, the square tip liner is in a V shape, keeps the needle down in the bottom of the tip. When you have a round object like this, when you go around a corner, it can actually pull the needle out of the alignment of the tube. This is one where I'm going to go with the machine a little backwards here, but I'm going to go very slow so I make sure I get the proper penetration. Then I'm going to turn and come back in the correct position. If you'll notice, I work from here to here to here, and then I went up on this one side. Because I'm left-handed, I work from the left side better than the right side. So vice versa for a righty. Then I'm coming down and around the design, and now I'm going to pick it up this way. For a lefty, it's great. For a righty, he would have started here and worked from this side and then worked over. You're only as good as the last tattoo you put on. Believe me, that's the one they'll be talking about. Now I'm going to run this line here. Now I've got to get myself in a little bit different position because I'm not going to take it and go like this with it. That's too long of a line to try to pull backwards. I'm actually going to get in position and I'm going to run the line straight up so it keeps the needle in the bottom of the tube. Very important. Now we're going to wash our design down so we can see everything that's there. This is the time to go back, touch anything that you have to touch up before you do your fill-in work. You may have lines on here that may not exactly connect, which we're going to do a thorough job on checking first. Uh, we're wiping down with the Tinkster Green Soap, as you see. We're also going to get a alcohol wipe. And we're going to clean it down with an alcohol wipe, too. And then we'll give it another shot of the Tinkster Green Soap just to cool it down because, unfortunately, the alcohol makes it a little hot. Okay, we're going to get ready to do the uh, fill-in work on this. Again, I'm working directly off the points of the needle. I'm not sticking that whole needle into the skin. Now we're starting to do what they call shading. I'm going in, I'm setting the ink in, and then I'm feathering the ink out. So I get more of what they call like an airbrush effect. With a four needle shader, again, it will allow you to get into the tight areas and still get that airbrush effect on the tattoo. Very important to not overwork the skin area. If you'll notice, I try to go back in, work the area twice, leave it. 
if you go in there too many times, you will actually chew the skin tissue up. Now, if you'll look at my machine just before I'm going to touch it, if you'll come in close, you can see, you see the blot of ink that's on the outer side here? There's like a, like a drop that is accumulated on the outside. You want to make sure, that's why you'll see me do this sometimes, because if you go on the skin with that, sometimes you'll pick up a, a good sized puddle. And as you see, it's nice and square now. You're not going to get that, you're not going to get that big puddling. Something to watch for. If you'll notice, I'm going into this corner at a little bit of an angle, like this. I'm not taking the machine and doing this with it. Because if you go in this motion, you'll actually cut the skin wide open. If you'll notice, what I'm doing is I'm doing this. A little bit of a circular motion, but enough where I'm not coming up in there and going straight up with it. Okay, now I'm going to stop for a second. I'm going to point something out to you here about working, working ink onto the skin. If during your process uh, you're in a very tight area like this, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll spray the tissue. If you spray the tissue and you leave the liquid on the surface, you can actually go back through and check what is actually into the skin and what isn't and we'll show you different spots that you need to put a little touch of ink into. Notice I'm picking up when I'm shading. In, pick it up. When shading, try to get in as close as you can to the line before you shade out without actually going into the line. That will make your black much more even. If you'll notice when I'm shading the black, I'm actually taking the machine and doing this with it in this motion because remember this is a rounder object and you have to give it some depth coming around you can't run straight out with it because it'll be very flat if you'll notice the angle of my hand if you look at my fingers my fingers are not like they were when I outlined because when I outlined I was like this this, I have to be up so I can see where the ink is flowing. I'm up above the design. All right, we're going to do some shading. We're going to shade from the bottom here. And we're going to do it again in a circular form get more of a rounding effect on the design. I've switched to way I've placed my hand on the skin because being back here is too difficult at this time. So now I'm going to move to this type here, which you can spread your fingers and still get the tissue plenty tight enough to get the correct penetration. Okay, now we're going to get in a little bit heavier black. Still in the shading effect, but a little bit heavier up into these areas here, which will be primarily filled in a little bit more solid and then airbrushed out. When we're doing more of the solid type work in here for the harder black, if you'll notice I'm working in small circular motions such as this here to be more thorough. If I was to take the, the tattoo machine and do this, it would not be very thorough and there'd be holes all through the black. Notice that my fingers are in a different position again. They're not, they're not down here like I did when I lined. When you're lining, you have to be down. In the shade, sometimes you have to be up above so you can see what you're doing.
Now we're going to go into uh, the eye area up here, a little bit of that heavier black. And then we'll be getting into uh, what they call a little bit of washout, which is like a watered down black. It's regular straight black. Uh, it's diluted with distilled water uh, to the darkness or the lightness that you prefer. I like personally to mix up bottles with different shades. It makes the job much easier. Just make sure that you shake them before you use them. If you look, the black is much different. This is a very light black. It will be light when it heals too, but it's a totally different effect than the heavy black. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, change the black just a little bit. I'm going to work a, a little lighter black than what I'm working here, and then I'll work up and you'll see the black actually get lighter as I get to the top to give more of a rounding effect. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, just distilled water in one of these cups here that I haven't used because I'd like to get just a little bit lighter effect. So, and sometimes from dipping into the black, the black consistency gets a little bit too dark. So I'd like to have plain distilled water to wash out in too. It will allow me to get lighter as I'm going up on the top of the head. If you'll notice the different tones of black as I went up. A little darker, a little lighter, a little lighter, a little lighter. Okay, our tattoo has been checked over and now we're about ready to wrap this up. Uh, we're going to use a little bit of uh, bacitration ointment. A very light amount. We're going to uh, bandage it up. We're going to leave the bandage on for an hour. Wash it off with cold water and soap. Make sure you use your hands on this. Don't use a cloth on this because the skin tissue is very soft. And if you go on the skin tissue with a cloth, you'll actually rough it up and you'll tear a hole in it because the skin is very soft. And if you look, there's no holes in the tattoo. The tissue has not been torn. Very important, along with working off the points of the needles. That's what this is all about. This is a non-stick gauze so it, your customer will definitely appreciate that when he takes this off. If you place a type of gauze on here that will stick fast it will pull at the tattoo and possibly put a rip in the skin tissue. Okay we're going to tape it up now. We're going to use a, a paper tape some tattoo artists use or use a plastic tape. Works very well. So you're going to take the bandage off in an hour. You're going to wash this with cold water and soap. Put a very light amount of bacitration. Be very careful how much you put on because if you apply too much on, it does make the tattoo mucky and gooey. After you've done that process, pat it dry. Put the bacitration on. Cover this in regular plastic saran wrap. Change it twice a day for three days. It is okay to leave the plastic off providing you don't have pants rubbing on it. If you're sitting in your home, let it air. The air is good for it. Still, make sure it has the bacitration on it. After three days, stop using it. Apply a little bit of cocoa butter, aloe vera lotion, anything of that nature. Any kind of moisturizer works very well.
How's it look, Bill? Pretty good. Okay, center it up nice? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ready to go. Okay, we're going to start our new hot line. Remember, at the bottom. We're going to get ready to do some color work now. We're going to start with our dark colors first. Uh, then work to the lighter colors. It's much better that way. Your colors stay brighter because if you put a dark color on after you put your light colors on, they mesh in together and they distort the coloration. We have our colors already set out and we're going to start off with our Venetian Brown. This is in the Voodoo brand colors. A little bit of Vaseline. Helps keep the ink concentrated up here again. The end area for highlighting, deciding on whether you're going to leave a skin color or you put a lighter shade of brown or possibly even a white highlighting. We're going to rinse out. We've been rinsing out on an ultrasonic cleaner with water in a cup. This cleans out the color so you don't get what they call a flushback in tattooing which will be a mixture of a brown and your next color which would give you a distorted looking color into the skin. As you see, we're not picking up anything. Make sure that you do shake your bottles before you open them and pour them into the cap because they do separate just a little bit and that little bit could make a difference in the consistency that you're going to put into the skin. Okay, again we're going to start at the bottom of this design. We're going to work our green right on up. Remember, small circular motion, small spaces, small circular motion. This type of work here is a little tougher to do sometimes if you've got the wrong type of machine set up as far as a, a shader or a liner. This is being done with a 7 needle outliner and a 4 needle flat shader. Again, because the 4 needle flat shader does allow you to put a lot of ink in, but still get inside the tight area. Sometimes with a bigger uh, needle, you can't get inside and get things nice and tight. See how tight you can get in with that that four needle shader, but it still packs the color. So you're starting to get a build up on the tip. You got to clean this off because if you don't, it's not going to feed right again. Make sure you rinse out real well because again, we don't want to get a flush back in a color and end up with a dirty color. By rinsing in the cup in the ultrasonic cleaner, it's sending sonic waves to the water which is helping break down the excess ink in the tube to clean them. Also, you did see me do this many times after the rinse and not only did I do that for the reasoning of the color, but you also don't want water laying back up in your tube because that will thin your ink and you won't get true color. Nice and easy with that orange. Take it and shade it out because you're actually going to come in there and you're going to work some nice bright yellow into it.
rinse it down and get a look see if we have to go back and touch anything. Coming down to the end. Got the yellow to go. You sure not to overwork the yellow. It's always a funny color. It looks like it's not in. But believe me, if you work it twice and you work it thorough, it's in. Guys make very big mistakes. They overwork yellow and by overworking it, you actually do more damage than good. Right along the edge of the green. Very, very little circle. Let's pull that yellow right into the green. That's the big advantage of working a four needle shader. You can get right into those tight spots. Now I'm starting to get dirty color. I'm starting to get what they call that flush back I've been telling you about. It's more apt to show up with yellow because it's being such a light color. So now this is a case of having to rinse out again and then start again with the yellow. In this particular case, I'm not only going to rinse out, I'm actually going to stop and I'm going to refill. Over here I'm going to fill up a new cap full of yellow because I'm going to take this and show you. If you look at the yellow on the surface, there's a distortion in the color. That means you're going to end up with muddy color again. The extra time is worth it to build a good reputation. People will respect you and will come back to you for that, believe me. So you're going to take the bandage off in about an hour. Wash it off with cold water and soap. Make sure you use your hands on it. Pat it dry. Put a very light coat of bacitration on it. Cover it up in regular plastic saran wrap. Change it twice a day for three days. No longer than three days. Do not over apply the bacitration. If you do, you'll make it mucky and gooey. Very good. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Oh, hi, Jim. I got your uh, scorpion design done for you. Uh, I did a hand cut stencil for you, so we should be able to get that to fit on there quite well. Uh, what I probably need you to do first is kind of open up your shirt there, and we'll just kind of set it up here so we can get a look-see at it, how it's going to fit you. And let's place it in there. Let's tip it a little bit more. And that's perfect. Looks good. We've got a winner right there. Right now I'm going to place some stencil powder on here and I'm going to rub it off and then I'm going to tap off the excess. And after doing a setup with the machines and prepping Jim's skin, I'm going to apply some Vaseline to the skin area, which will make the stencil powder stick to the skin, and that's what I'll be tattooing from. These stencils that you make for people are single use. They're not made to reuse. And as you see, the black stencil powder is actually going into the little cracks that I etched into the plastic with the stencil cutter. You want to make sure to dab off the excess powder so you don't make a mess on the skin and as now our acetate stencil is prepared to use if you look the black is all in the cracks okay Jim we're gonna get you ready to do your cover up now I'm gonna clean your skin down
have some Vaseline here. We're going to prep the skin with this because this is going to hold the black stencil powder that I put on the stencil earlier. You want to be very careful how much you put on. You want to make the skin a little tacky. Okay, Jim, take your hands out of your pockets, please. Very important part of when you do any type of tattooing like this, arm work, make sure that you get your customer to stand up. Because if he's laying down, when you apply a stencil of any kind, it will be in a different position when he stands. This is back to where I had talked earlier about positioning. It makes it easy to position with an acetate stencil. Put it on, press it, catch it from the corner. Now you're prepared to do your tattoo work. Make sure you keep that skin tight at all times. If you notice, I, I am going back and forth on each side, trying to bring the sides up semi-equally, so I'm not coming in contact with any of the stencil as I'm working. Okay, we're going to wash it down, we'll get a look-see, if there's any touch-up work that needs to be done, we'll do it at this time. If you'll notice in this design as I'm working, the design is getting smaller as I'm coming down and I'm tapering down with the amount of shadow work I'm using from up above to a little less, to a little less, to just a little, to very little. It enables me to work the design much easier and still acquire a nice look. Again, we are working with a four needle flat shader and a seven needle round liner. Okay, now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of split the body just a little bit because I don't want to take this and actually just take it and draw a bunch of black in there. So what I'm actually going to do is like a shadow line here. Kind of a shadow line like this to take out that name and give the scorpion a little bit of shape. And then come back over here and I'm going to shadow out coming out this way. I'm going to do it very light. I can always go darker, but I can't go lighter. I'm shading in more of a rounded motion because I'm trying to give some texture to the design and not just put the black on and put it on flat. It does take longer to put the black in in this way, but when the tattoo is finished, it looks a lot better. shadowing effect just to show that there would be an image on there and it would actually cast a shadow up on the upper section because the light is coming from the front, casting the shadow off the body onto the skin. Try to give a little bit more realism to the actual design itself. It helps to complement the heavier black too uh, because when this actually heals, this is the washout black again. 
uh, which will be very light and it will be nice because you will have uh, a couple of different contrast on the actual design versus just the black itself. That's pretty much going to complete our cover up. As you see, we didn't do a complete black tattoo, which is not necessary to do with cover up work. If you learn to put texture in designs and move black around to give shape, that's where a little bit of the creativity comes in and you have to visualize what you're going to do before you actually put it on the skin. Different cover-ups require different techniques, but black is your basic cover-up. You don't want to go in and hammer a lot of black in because you see so much of that. But if you can work it into a design and still give it texture, it does help the design a lot in the end. We're going to talk a little bit about sterilization here. There's many different types out there today. There's uh, steam, dry heat, and liquid. That you would have to check with the, your uh, local health department and your local authorities to make sure that you're doing the right thing and making it safe for your customers. There's also lots of different uh, types of autoclave bags offered. The autoclave bags also come with an autoclave indicator on them so your health department can check to make sure you're doing the right thing. Uh, we're going to go over some different types of machines that are offered on the market today. Uh, we're actually going to start off with a Puma tattoo machine. Uh, there's Many different styles of machines, weights, coil wraps themselves. There are eight wrap coils out there being offered, 10 wrap coils, depending on your personal preference. This machine here is a 14 needle round shader used for your variants of different types of tattooing. Some for fill in and shade work, some for thick line work for different types of designs. Uh, a very important part of the machine itself is the rubber bands because that's going to give you your stabilization in your tube to prevent your needle bar from fluctuating off the bottom down here which would cause splatter in the machine. You should change these on a regular basis to keep your tension against your bar consistent. Consistency is very important. We're going to go into a regular Supreme machine. An important part on this, again, I bring back from earlier in the video, is the grommets that connect from the bar to the armature bar. No play within fluctuation, spray in the machine again. You should change these on a regular basis. Now we're going to come out to the Reaper. This is one of the two machines that I referred to earlier in the video, which was probably one of the best tattoo machines put out on the market today. An important part of this machine, this machine runs with 10 wrap coils in it, which gives you a little extra punch, which sometimes you do need within a machine. This is a seven needle liner bar and a five needle square tip. This machine here is the Puma machine. This will give you a little bit more variance in certain areas. This can vary on the back connection here, which you can adjust for your clip cord. Also running in eight wrap coils all the machines that you see here run with capacitors on them you can vary on the uh, capacitor themselves this is a six needle flat shader this is the Wolverine 
This goes with the Reaper. An important part with these machines, as is all machines, you never, ever pick up a machine and press on the front springs. If you do that, you will throw the whole adjustment of the machine out because it's very important to stay consistent on your contact point and your contact screw being the same gap. Okay, this here is a lightweight machine. It's exactly what it says it is. It's a lightweight. It's lighter than a lot of these other machines and feels more comfortable in the hand. Again, it's a personal preference. An important part of the spring set up in the machine is to make sure that you don't get a carbon buildup between your contact point and your contact screw. That you can take and file out with a contact file. A special point file works very well. Now I'm going to show you the Stinger machine, which is primarily used for outlining. Again, it's a very fast machine, puts a very nice outline down. This rubber piece here is primarily there for more support for the spring, so the spring doesn't lose its spring tension quite so quickly, keeps your machine in adjustment a bit longer. Now we're going to talk a little bit about needles and the way you get them from the uh, manufacturers. This here is a single needle liner. Uh, it has a protective coating on it which protects the points of the needle so they don't become damaged. I'm going to pull this off. And if you look, there's one single needle in there. It makes a very fine line. You have to pick your work for this particular type needle as well as any other. It makes a very fine line. This here is a three needle outliner. Again, lays a fine line. This is a four needle outliner. You will need all different sizes of needles to do the proper jobs during your tattooing procedures. Sometimes you will actually probably set up three, four, five machines sometimes to do one particular tattoo to acquire a certain style. This here is a five needle round liner. The line will get a little bit fatter the more needles that you add into the group. This is a seven needle round liner. Sometimes can also be used for certain types of shading. Okay, this is a four needle flat shader which is a very good needle to use. It does fill a, a nice size area in and it does allow you to get into tight areas. This is a six needle flat shader which actually packs a lot of ink very quickly. It's not as easy to maneuver around but it is great for packing in big areas. This here is a seven needle mag. The needles are stacked. They pack a lot of ink. They're very quick. You have to be very quick with these.
This is an 11 needle magnum, packs a lot of ink, very quick. If you'll notice, I've been going through, pulling off these little ends off the needles here. That's a protective coating, as we talked about earlier. This is an eight needle round, sometimes used for shading, sometimes for lining. Again, personal preference, particular type design, makes all the difference. This is a 14 needle round shader. Again, used for the same purposes, sometimes shading, sometimes lining. Why I pulled these ends off here, I have to check these because of this type of coating that's put on here to protect these. If you'll notice, I have three different types of eye loops out here. I have a 5 power, a 15 power, and a 22 power. What I'm going to do is I'm going to check the needle itself to make sure that there's no particles from the protective coating in between the needles. If there was, it possibly could cause a conflict when I'm putting ink into the skin. Over here we have the different types of tubes that are used in accordance with the needle bars that we're using. Some of these you can use in combinations of what you have. If you look here, this is a single needle liner, or you could put a three needle liner bar into this. Personal preference, round tip. This is a five needle liner tube, a round tip. This is a three needle or a single needle square tip. This is a different type of tube tip because in the needle that you use, it has to sit directly in the bottom of the V. If it doesn't, it will not feed correctly for you. This, you could use an eight needle round in. This is also a liner or possibly a filler, depending upon what your preference is. This here is a 14 needle shader tube, round tipped, for filling or lining on occasion. This is a flat shader tube. You can use a magnum in this, you can use a flat, Why the tube tip is as wide as it is? Because it will allow the six to go in there and lay nice and flat and feed properly for you. This tube, sometimes it's personal preference because it's a little easier to clean. Again, a six needle flat shader tube, different type, a little bit more closed, sometimes holds ink a little better because the ink goes up inside and it stays up here better for you. Sometimes it's a little harder to clean them, but they feed better sometimes. If you'll look, the difference in the hole size in the end. When I was talking to you about the uh, particles from the protective coating, you want to make sure that you get to check them with your eye loop. A very important part. You should clean your needle bars before autoclaving them. This particular eye loop is good for seeing particles in here and setting up your needle bars in your machines. If you're looking for a, a damaged needle that you had bumped, you're better to go to like a 15 or a 22. It will give you a closer view on the needle itself and the point.
we have up here, we have a type of spray that's being offered out now. Uh, spray ice, it can be used on tattoos after they're done to help swelling, taking away some of the uh, stinging sensation that sometimes tattoos cause. And Hippocleanse, which we use when applying a paper stencil. If you have problems or questions on what we've explained to you here, you're best to refer back to tattooing from A to Z. There's photographs, written documentation of what goes on with the machine, and it's just very informational. Uh, we'd like to talk a little bit also about the uh, Lexan tubes that are offered. A three needle round tip, the sterilization for them are steam or liquid. This is a three needle square tip. Remember, in using a square tip liner, the needle has to sit in the bottom of the tip. This Lexan tube here is a four needle flat shader. This Lexan tube is a six needle flat shader. Primarily all for disposable Now we're going to tell you uh, about the parts upon the machine in case you have to call up and order parts at any time. From the top, we have a front binding post, which is the post that runs across here. We have a back binding post, which is a back connection to your clip cord. We have a capacitor, which runs on the back side of the frame. Your coils, front spring, back spring, O-ring, armature bar. Armature bar nipple. Contact screw, contact point, needle bar, tube, tube tip guard. Lever lock fastener device. Frame. Black nylon screw for holding in the contact screw. Rubber bands, number 12s. 